Hey everyone, it's Kristen from Quebec, and today I'm starting a series of video tutorials on print and cut for silhouette die cutting machines. The print and cut feature was what first attracted me to silhouette machines years ago, and I love all of the options that this feature opens up for all of us. In today's video, we'll be going over how to set up a file for print and cut, as well as some of the advanced options that are available for print and cut. I'll be using Silhouette Studio version 4 Designer Edition for these videos, but most everything that I'll be showing you is available in the free version as well. Okay, so I have a blank document open here, and the paper size is set to the default Silhouette Cameo size, which is 12 by 12 inches. Most of us don't have wide format printers that will accommodate this paper size, so we'll need to change the paper size to fit our printer. If the page setup window isn't open already, go over to the right menu and click to open it. It's the top icon, the one that looks like a little piece of paper. Once the page setup window is open, we'll open the size drop down menu and choose letter size or the standard 8.5 by 11 inch paper size. There are other paper sizes available in the drop down, and if you're in a country outside the US, then one of these other sizes may apply here. You can also set a custom paper size and change the orientation from portrait to landscape, so just choose the option that works best for you and your printer. Next, we want to activate registration marks, which will let your silhouette machine know where to cut when the time comes. While the page setup window is still open, click on the right icon tab, the one that's a little rectangle with marks in three corners. In the style drop down box, you'll choose type 1, which covers the silhouette cameo, portrait, and curio machines. Type 2 marks are for the original SD machines, so choose this type if you have an older SD machine. Once you choose the registration mark type, you'll see the marks appear in your file, along with a red line that shows the print borders for the page. You'll see three registration marks, a solid black square in the top left corner, and two corner brackets, one in the top right corner and one in the lower left corner. There's also a gray crosshatched area. Never place any image that you want to print and cut outside of those registration marks or within that crosshatched area, or you'll run into problems with your images printing and cutting. I've also heard some people say that you shouldn't put any images into the clear area between the top two registration marks or you could have problems, but I've often put images there and haven't had any problems, so it's up to you whether you want to risk it or not. In the registration mark window, we also have a number of additional options for altering the registration marks. We can alter the length and the thickness, and making the registration marks thicker may help if your printer tends to print on the lighter side or if your silhouette machine is having trouble registering the marks. In the position area, we can change the inset position of the registration marks, which enlarges or shrinks the print and cut area on all four sides. The higher the inset number, the smaller the print and cut area. And at any point, you can click the Restore Defaults button to restore all of the default values in this window with one click. Under the Orientation area, we can click to invert the mat and registration marks, and there are also some advanced options that will allow you to change the insets of each individual side of the print and cut box. For example, increasing the left inset value moves the registration marks to the right, and increasing the top inset value moves the top registration marks down. If you're just starting out with Silhouette Print and Cut, I'd highly recommend leaving all of the print and cut values at their defaults. To be honest, I never really use any of these options, and I don't think that most of them are very practical. Plus, you can get some unexpected and unwanted results if you do move the registration marks. I tried printing and cutting a bunch of different pages with the insets set to different custom values. You can see some of the examples here. I think that the most practical custom registration mark setup is one like this, where the marks are all moved to the top left of the page. This would be a good way to save the rest of the sheet of cardstock since the registration marks will only print in that top left area. But beware because some strange things can happen when you customize the registration mark positions. Most of my results were very accurate, but one page did print with the registration marks and images in the wrong area. The first time I printed it, everything printed too far up on the page, like you can see here, and the registration failed every time I tried it. The second time I printed the page, it print and cut perfectly. So just be aware that odd things can happen sometimes when you customize these registration mark positions. It wasn't common in my experience, but it can happen. 
Now that our page is set up for print and cut, we're ready to add some images. So be sure to save this file to your computer or to your Silhouette library and tune into the next video in the Silhouette Print and Cut series where I'll talk about the differences between raster and vector images and show you what this means when it comes to sizing and printing. I hope that you found this video to be helpful and if you did, it would be great if you would give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. Thanks for watching and I hope you'll tune in again soon.